Craig, I just want to get your reaction to Trump's historic verdict. Uh, I know you're in Europe, but were you surprised when you heard it? Yeah, I think this is a very uh, slow moving train from one perspective. You know, all of the indictments have been around for a long time. In this case, we've known for months the New York case would probably be the one that came forward before the election. The most surprising thing, in a way, was that the jury decided it so fast. After weeks of testimony and documents and details, uh, they decided in just two days. And I think that was really the most dramatic moment in the courtroom. All of the parties, including former President Trump, thought he was going home, thought they would be coming back. But instead, the jury came forward with this verdict of 34 counts of guilty. And it's an extraordinary moment. Uh, there, obviously, there's been nothing like this before regarding uh, former presidents or, of course, aspiring future presidents. You're absolutely right. We are in uncharted territory. And one of the questions everyone is asking is, what are the chances the former president will actually serve any time behind bars? Yes. So two things about that. One, it's unlikely that he will serve time behind bars because he is a first time offender and this is a nonviolent crime. Of course, it is possible. Each one of the counts has a maximum of four years, possibly. But I think it's not too likely. The other thing to bear in mind is the calendar. So he has already made clear that he will appeal this ruling. That appeal could take 12 months. It could take 18 months. So for political purposes, that will be well on the far side of any election and raises the possibility that he might face some sentence during his time as president, uh, which would raise different legal consequences. You know, in this country, when you apply for a job in the application process, a lot of employers ask you if you have a criminal record, if you uh, have been convicted of anything. Trump is a convicted felon, and yet, and yet, he can run for the presidency of this country. Explain that one to me. Well, there are two things about it. One is the Constitution sets the rules for who can be president, different from any other job that you or I would apply for. There are a very small number of requirements and no other requirements. But the other peculiarity is that this calendar means that the Republicans basically all lined up behind former President Trump before they knew the outcome of this case. If this conviction had happened three or four months ago, then another candidate like Nikki Haley might have been able to get better traction with the voters. As it is, the Republican Party is all in behind Trump, and they have been for months, knowing that this was a possibility. And now they know that it's a reality. At the end of the day, Craig, does any of this uh, make a difference? Yes, unprecedented. Yes, historic. But Trump raised $35 million in just since that guilty verdict. So to his base, does it matter? It doesn't matter to his base. But I tell you, I think that there are, um, it depends on what one thinks of the election. Uh, if one believes, as I do, that it's basically a 50-50 election with a very close margin on one side or the other, this conviction cannot help with any undecided voters or any voters in the middle. Not a single middle of the road voter thinks, gosh, I support President Trump more because he's a convicted felon. On the contrary, I think this really could hurt him with a small margin of undecided or middle voters, uh, which depending on what you believe about the polls could be enough to make a difference in the election altogether. And by all indications by what you've been watching, was this in fact a fair trial? I mean, Trump has called the verdict a disgrace, a saying the trial was rigged. Yeah, there's no truth to any of those allegations. But I have to say, uh, this case from the beginning has been an extraordinary person going through very ordinary procedures. They seated 12 jurors. They had an indictment. They had a trial. They had arguments. They had a judge who sat. Uh, and then at the end, the guilty defendant complains about the process. The only thing that's extraordinary about this is the person who's attacking the criminal justice system is an aspiring president of the United States. I think that is the most distressing part of all of this, is an attack on the criminal justice system by someone who aspires to be the highest officer in the land. And finally, Craig, walk us through what we're going to see on July 11th during sentencing. Yes. So what happens is the state, the prosecutors, and the probation office put together a report with a recommended sentence. Uh, I've already said I think most likely they will not recommend prison time because he's a first-time offender and because these are nonviolent crimes. On the other hand, his behavior throughout the case has been completely unrepentant. He has attacked the judge. He has attacked the courts. Uh, this would weigh in favor of a heavier sentence. 
Uh, I predict that he will probably get a probation sentence, not a prison term. Um, but there are grounds to have higher sentences if the judge is so inclined. All right, we'll leave it there. Professor Craig Green, thank you very much.